Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. I'm a beginner, and the content right now on my channel is to reflect what it's like for me as a beginner to uh, try and get up the learning curve in astronomical imaging. And while some of the content focuses around uh, the specific equipment that I use, uh, I do think independent of the equipment that you may use, if you're a beginner, you might be running into some of the some similar challenges uh, that I am uh, running uh, into, and one of them being um, being able to identify authoritative sources. So I no longer, yeah, I think just yesterday or the day before I published this video, goodbye bias. Uh, my ZWO ASI 294 Pro calibration frames approach. Just when I kind of thought I had my approach to calibration frames, in particular to my ASI 294 monochrome camera, where if you haven't watched this video, it's basically about how instead of bias frames, I am going to use my flat and dark flat frames in lieu of the uh, the bias frames but um, in in this video uh, the that I published uh, you know I'm kind of sharing on how hard it is to find an authoritative source and I think I know something and then I go to cloudy nights or I go to stargazer lounge and I get some new information and then I really question what do I really know as a beginner so um, right after I had uh, finished pushing up that uh, video I went out onto uh, cloudy nights and if you're not um, um, participating or at least reading the content on uh, cloudy nights as a beginner um, I highly recommend uh, cloudy nights as a source of information um, one of the best forums I've participated in as far as the friendliness of the people uh, it's not highly argumentative or really argumentative at all. Uh, from what I can see, it's a great source of information. And then I just want to point out another one that I use real quickly, and that is Stargazer's Lounge. It seems to be uh, most of the participants at Stargazer, uh, Stargazer's Lounge seems to be located in uh, the EU, uh, which is fine because they have even more challenges at times when it comes to getting uh, clear nights and everything but it's another good source so anyway back to the purpose of this video it's really about um, a little modification I have to make to uh, my calibration frame process so again I push the video this video up and then I go over here to uh, cloudy nights and I see this thread help me with a reasonable starter kit for mono imaging but along the course of the thread, uh, someone says, uh, when it comes to the ASI 294mm uh, camera, which I have, you have to make sure that your flats are at least three seconds in length. Uh, so I, I don't know, I'm, there's kind of a discussion, and I don't see if I can find. So yeah, so basically I asked the question, um, so someone wrote, basically just make sure your flats take more than three seconds. And this is specific to the ASI 294. And I just asked the question, uh, why more than three seconds? Oh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, not disputing it, just trying to uh, fill a knowledge gap and identify the documentation for my reference library as a 294mm owner. So as it turns out um, a couple of people on cloudy nights who um, at least one of them I know is an owner of an ASI 294 uh, and it's a person who I've uh, been reading their pro their posts on uh, cloudy nights since they are a 294 mm owner and um, I think they're you know they speak with authority I think they're you know he speaks with authority I, I trust uh, the information he's sharing. He's also commented on my videos from time to time. Um, so him and another person did some research um, around the camera and came uh, to conclude because of the variable nature uh, of uh, the camera sensor, uh, it doesn't get stabilized until uh, three seconds. 
And again, I think if you go to this post on uh, Cloudy Nights and look for Help Me with a Reasonable Starter Kit for Mono Imaging, uh, that's where you'll, you'll find some of the content. And then there are some older threads that I've found where they actually uh, did the work and uh, that led them to the conclusion that um, when it comes to ASI 294MM, make sure that your flats and dark flats are a minimum of three seconds in exposure. So um, uh, here I'm just building out my uh, dark uh, library. But uh, so let's go over to the flat wizard. And uh, the way I'm handling that is um, in uh, Nina, which is the control uh, software that I use for all my imaging, and uh, in combination with my Pegasus Astro Flat Master 150, I am able to change some settings. And um, when I built my flat calibration set for uh, Oxygen 3, um, the duration of the exposure was 1.27 seconds. So I thought I was good. But I go to Cloudy Nights and I say, okay, it, you know, someone says it needs to be a minimum of three seconds. So I am accepting that information uh, from them as authoritative. Um, and I went and then I uh, redid uh, my flats and you're able to set a minimum exposure setting here. So I set it to a minimum of three seconds. So the exposure had to be at least three seconds. But, and this is where maybe I need to learn a little bit more information. Um, I had to increase the histogram mean target and allow up to 90% of the 65,000 or whatever the upper, upper limit is uh, of the ADU. So uh, this is my current setting for producing the flat for um, and dark flat for oxygen three. All my other filters um, did not have an issue. They were all longer than um, five seconds, six seconds. Uh, so I feel I'm good on that. But um, just trying to illustrate as a beginner, um, it's you know trying to find the authoritative source. It's probably not going to be possible. You're going to have to find authoritative sources, and the and the, and they need to be sources that you have confidence in uh, uh, that what they're sharing with you is good to execute upon. And that just takes some decision making and a little bit of research. Uh, what I did is, you know, again, I've been following uh, the one person uh, on uh, Cloudy Nights. And um, I really think they're uh, thoughtful, methodical, and take a uh, scientific approach uh, to the conclusions uh, uh, that they're coming to. So um, I'm going to use uh, the three seconds or more uh, for my flats now in my calibration routine. All right. Other than that, um, you know, there's not much else to say. I'm about to sit down and start the planning for my trip down to... Uh, Goat Mountain Astronomical Research uh, Station uh, now that the new moon is approaching. Uh, so I'm going to be putting that together and I will produce a video uh, to show you how I think about planning um, a remote site trip, uh, what things I factor into uh, the planning process and I'll share that with you. Again, part of that is um, you know, if you haven't done that before, uh, you can at least look at my ideas on how to do it. And if you have done it many times before, you'll see something that maybe uh, I'm uh, not uh, I'm not covering. So um, anyway, um, as a beginner, you need to be flexible. You need to be open to new information. And I think if uh, N, uh, that might mean some rework on your part, uh, like I'll have to do to recreate my flat and dark flat frames, but that's okay. Uh, that's what you do sometimes. Okay, so if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, other than that, thanks for dropping into the channel. And uh, I hope you have clear skies wherever you may be. And I just want to say, whatever you have to image with, 
that's what you image with. Don't get caught up in what other people may have. Of course, be curious, you know, explore why they may be using what they're using. In my case, going to narrowband and uh, monochrome because I'm in a heavily light polluted area is uh, the reason I went there. But, you know, whatever you have, use and uh, start the journey and enjoy it. And um, you don't need very high cost, what some might call premium equipment, uh, to enjoy the hobby and produce some fantastic images. Again, so much about an image is on the processing side. Yes, you need good data to go into the processing stream, but so much of the, uh, of the quality of an image is going to be determined on your processing skills uh, and not so much on the collection side. Although I'm speaking in general because the moment you say it's not definitive, I'm sure people with certain equipment might be producing a higher quality image. But in general, uh, just enjoy it, use what you use, and uh, have fun. All right, that's about it. Till next time.